Lead us, guide us, fill us again and again and again with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So there's people that get really bogged down in this passage. And um, what it's going to say to us is, if you know about the law, therefore, if you have a Jewish background, you're accountable for what you know. If you don't know about the law, you're still accountable for what you know. So if you got the law, you're accountable for it. If you don't got the law, but you understand the natural order of the universe, you're accountable for it. God put it in our hearts. That's right. Okay, so we're in Romans 2, verse 12. We're going to pick it up in CEV, Contemporary English Version. Um, I can tell you why, but I don't want to take the time to do so. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, Romans 2, 12, CEV. Uh, those people who don't know about God's law will still be punished for what they do wrong. And the law will be used to judge everyone who knows what it says. God accepts those who obey his law, but not those who simply hear it. Okay. What an interesting set of um, restrictions here. If you know the law, you're accountable for it. If you don't know the law... You're accountable for what you know. So, and is it, and, and and Paul will go on at great length to say, is it valuable to know the law? Of course. Does it, is it crippling not to know the law? Of course not. So those who don't know about God's law will still be punished for what they do wrong because, because we have an innate conscience, a God-breathed conscience that tells us what's right and wrong. and uh, His spirit. That's right. Uh, and, and the spirit works in, in believers, but there's a conscience inside people. Uh, uh, little kids know when they've done wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a internet thing, and the little girl's got lipstick all over her face. And... Uh, Mm -hmm. what what are you doing i went to homey depot and got whoop stick <laughs> mm -hmm. did you put on mommy's dick no i put on my whip stick and it just little kids know when they've done wrong yeah. there's a conscience in there now conscience in adults is a little trickier because our conscience can be trained to do wrong we can we we can be trained to hate these kind of people or hate that group of people or whatever. We can train our conscience to be wrong. We see it all the time. That's right. But but inherently, innately in people is a God breathed conscious. Now, uh, and if you don't live up to it, you're guilty. <laughs> and the other kind of people are the the Jews who have the Torah and hundreds of books explaining what the law does. And <laughs> you know what it says, but but you don't just simply hear it. You gotta be doers also. And and in fact, in terms of salvation, you gotta be perfect doers. <laughs> you can't you just be perfect as your father in heaven. That's right. So so he's he's guiding us into Romans three and beyond. Uh, so um, if you do wrong, there's a judgment. If you do wrong and you know what the Torah is, there's a judgment. And so it's not like we've got an excuse or they got an excuse or whatever. There's no excuse. You done wrong. And God will judge it for you until you come to Christ. There's judgment hanging over you. Yeah. God, I mean, Jesus had said that basically when he lays it out, he says, well, you know, if you even think it. Yeah, that's you, right. You, you, you've, done uh, it. you've done it. Yeah. Um, or so, so you really, these laws can be... Um, that are inside of you or written or taught to you or whatever. It's like the things you do, the things you don't do, the things you ought to do and you don't do, 
the the things that you think i mean it can it, it lays it out that you're not just it doesn't mean that you're having sex with this woman you can just look at her yeah. with lustful eyes or thoughts that's right and it's just as bad that's you right. know and uh all of this okay rich thoughts on on 12 and 13 well, I think uh, a little more of this chapter has to unfold before we can okay. say more at this point. Okay, let's try 14 then. Verse 14. Some people naturally obey the law's commands, even though they don't have the law. This proves that the conscience is like a law written in the human heart. And it will show whether we are forgiven or condemned. When God appoints Jesus Christ to judge everyone's secret thoughts, just as my message says. <laughs> yeah. Wow, huh? Yeah, he really. Okay, and the thought continues. So let's continue with the thought. 17. 17, the Jews and the law. Some of you call yourselves Jews. You trust in the law and take pride in God. By reading the scriptures, you learn how God wants you to behave, and you discover what is right. You're sure that you are a guide for the blind and a light for all who are in the dark. A little so, bit of sarcasm there. You're so sure <laughs> that you can be a guide to the blind and a light for the dark. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, 20. Uh, verse 20. We're in Romans 2, 20 CEV. And since there is knowledge and truth in God's law, you think you can instruct fools and teach young people. But how can you teach others when you refuse to learn? Ouch. You preach it is wrong to steal. But do you steal? You say that people should be faithful in marriage. But are you faithful? You hate idols, yet you rob their temples. You take pride in the law, but you disobey the law and bring shame to God. It is just as the scripture tells us. You have made foreigners say inth insulting things about God. Wow. Oh, great. Because so, of you, the Gentiles. Yeah. That's right. So we have, um, we have the Lord Jesus coming down on the hypocrites most strongly in his in his particularly on the uh holy week uh, exhortations and here we have paul coming down on hypocrites also yeah. uh jewish hypocrites who think that they have the law and they still do wrong and they know what the law says but they do and they think wrong and non-jewish people who know what's the right thing to do and don't do it <laughs> and there's judgment, like equally. There's God is impartial. He judges sin, sin is justly. Sin. He sin is sin, as we read in chapter one, just starting this chapter. Sin is sin. Right. I uh, it it brought back in memory for me in Matthew chapter five that he lays out everything as we were just talking about. Yeah. About adultery. About um, all of it that just looking at it and, and uh, in chapter five of Matthew, it ends the chapter uh, and it says, you shall be as perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. And that can only happen if our sins are forgiven by Jesus. Yeah, the, 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 the qualification is right there. That's and right. in the sin that we're talking about, he lays it, Jesus Christ himself lays it out. That's true. Just as Paul is saying here. He's he's saying the same thing, and it's to the circumcised or the un it doesn't matter, Jew or non-Jew. That's right. Let's get to 25 then, Rich. Verse 25. Um, being circumcised is worthwhile if you obey the law. But if you don't obey the law, you are no better off than people who are not circumcised. In fact, if they obey the law, they are as good as anyone who is circumcised. So everyone who obeys the law but has never been circumcised will condemn you. 
even though you are circumcised and have the law, you still don't obey its teachings. If that's the case, yeah. What a what a radical uh, departure from from Paul's childhood. Yeah, where he was taught that there were Jews, and then everybody else is low life. Yeah, and here he's <laughs> saying, if you have the formal parts of Judaism, but don't do what it says, you're to be judged. And if you have no understanding of the Torah and the and the commandments, and you don't do what's right in your heart, you're going to be judged. Yeah. And so, and we think, oh, this is God judging everything. Well, the answer is yes, God judges everything. But but we need to get through this chapter and the previous chapter to get to the next chapter. But yeah. anyway. It's, uh, Paul's education is, is we already know his background. Yes. And he, I mean, he knows the law. Yeah. I mean, more than most people. Right. And he was sent to kill the Christians, so he knows that too. He, um, what were they called back then? The uh, the Christians were uh, uh, the fall. I don't. Know, I forget the name of it, but uh, he went to kill them. Yep, you know? that's right. So twenty eight, verse twenty eight, Romans two twenty eight. Just because you live like a Jew and are circumcised doesn't make you a real Jew. To be a real Jew, you must obey the law. True circumcision is something that happens deep in your heart, not something done to your body. And besides, you should want praise from God and not from humans. Okay, so that takes us through two. Let's see if we can summarize two. Rich? Yeah, it's um, a, uh, important work because, I mean, you got to look at Paul's overall plan here, yep. um, which is to uh, see the necessity of Christ ultimately. Yeah, that's right. That's what it's got to come down to. If you're not um, aware of your need for a savior, why bother? Yeah. yeah, and Jesus is worth the bother by all standards and measures. But in yeah. order to appreciate that, you have to have uh, you have to have an understanding of who you are, what you are in the eyes of God, and uh, you you got to and not trust even your own eyes. You don't want to kid yourself. This is a big part of this. You don't want to fool yourself just because you're you claim your Jewish heritage, for instance. Um, it's not going to help you here. If anything, it's going to uh, add to the weight of your responsibility to obey. Yeah. Uh, and that, uh, and meaning that if, if you do transgress in that context, you need to save her even more. Of course, she hasn't gotten that far yet, but that's coming, you know, that's the, that's the overall development of all of this stuff from chapters one and two, being, becoming aware of sin realizing uh, that um, it's pervasive throughout. Even people who have the natural law uh, apparent in them because of their uh, what their consciences direct them to do, um, it, it's not enough. It's, it's, it, you want to think so? I want to think so. <laughs> I, uh, uh, in fact, and, but I will say too that I, you know, I don't believe the great white throne judgment is just a rubber stamp. Yeah, that's um, right. I think that uh, people's lives are taken into account by the things they did. Not that anybody's saved by their works, but it is reflective of their hearts. It should right. be reflective of their hearts. That's what Jesus, that's what God is going to see. Not just any and every work, but those that really reflect the condition of the heart. And um, uh, when that comes forward, uh, that's ultimately uh, what is judged. And people, people will, be, will be aware of that uh, right. at the time. But um, one of the fascinating things about space time continuum things is the, 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 the earth is in a box. It's in a time box. Things go, things go here. They go here. The tide, high tide is at such and such a time. The sunrise is at such and such a time. The, the earth lives in space-time continuum. 
God does not live in space time contained. I mean, you just think about the, the white throne judgment here. There's seven billion people on the planet. <laughs> if you if you were bound by time and space, that's gonna take a long, 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 long time to do that judgment. But God's that's not bound by time and space. Point. They've got, uh, you're talking about uh, the, all of the people from all of history that's going to be far outnumber the seven, eight billion that are alive today. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, eight to this the eight. Is a long, not, this not is that. a long line into that courtroom. Yeah. If, yeah. If, time, if time is the same at judgment, and it's not because God is yeah. not enclosed in this time box. Yeah, but God makes it simple. <laughs> that's like, right. We started off in chapter one and it laid out. And the last thing we came up or I came up with is it is simple. Either it's 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 black and white. The judgment is not a big thing. Well, it's not a list of what you did or didn't do. It's your heart. It's whether you have Christ in your heart. That's it's right. in the people before Christ still. It was what was in their heart. Okay. And and God knows because of your actions also. That's right. You you know, you work out your salvation because you see something and you know it's wrong, so you do it or you don't do it. That's right. Because Christ in your heart. Right. So right. I've talked about this before, but I like it, so I get to do it again. Why would a loving God send a sinner to heaven because heaven is a place where you worship god mm -hmm. heaven is a place where god is predominant and nothing else is and if you hate god all your life why would god force you against your will to be in a place for eternity so why would a loving god send a sinner to heaven which is a flip on the why would a loving god send anybody to hell um, it's a flip because God's presence is holy and mm. awesome. And, and there is a marriage supper going on and there is fellowship. And you do know, and you do know your mom, my mom, you do, you are known in heaven, yeah. but heaven is a place where God's radiance is supreme. There needs to be no temple in heaven because God ourself, there's need to be no light in heaven because God is our light. So, so why would a loving God send a sinner to heaven? And you think, wow, you know, and, and it's astonishing to me. But but the message for us today is that love God, understand he paid the price for your sin and live that out yeah. in his power and glory. And, and when you hit a pothole, confess your sins. And if you confess yeah. your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And confess means not just saying it. That's right. It means turning from it. That's right. And in and not just turning from it, but it's turning from it in your heart. That's right. And and one of the best proof scriptures of that is, uh, when is a thief not a thief? Well, the thief's not a thief the minute he's not stealing. He's still a thief. Yeah. The scripture says a thief is not a thief when he gets saved. He gets a real job. And yeah. he starts to give to the poor. And then he can say, I'm not a thief anymore. But yeah. until that point, he's only in between thievings. He's not, oh, well, I didn't steal anything for the last eight minutes. Therefore, I'm not a thief. No, that's not what it is. God requires that you come to him, that you get your sins forgiven, and that you make every effort to live in his spirit and his power and his glory. It, in it takes asking him sometimes. I know I've... I've gone through stuff in my life Amen. and fallen back and Amen. and gone back and said, God, can you please not only take this, but can you please help me? Amen. And he's faithful. And he yeah. does. You know? Amen. Amen. So what, a, what a fascinating legal paper this book of Romans is. Unbelievable. You're guilty because you didn't do what you knew you should do. or And you also didn't and you also did what you knew you shouldn't do. But anyway, you're guilty. And whatever else you've tried, nothing is going to pay the price but what Christ did. And this is a, I mean, if you look at the book of Romans 
as a legal document, then you say the the lawyer presents the case. You're guilty. You're a sinner. I didn't you, know the law. It does not matter. That's right. Whatever your excuse is, you need Jesus. And so how amazing, how how um that the 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 light of the Holy Ghost can just shine through these words two thousand years later and still rock your soul. Yeah. Final thoughts, Rich. Yeah, that's uh that uh, sums it up that um the, the, the um we have to realize that uh, we uh, we come up short when it comes to, to the standards of God. Jesus pointed out so eloquently, as Mark Mike was re reflecting earlier about uh, uh, the way the uh, Sermon on the Mount is laid out and the yeah. higher standards that are put there. If, if these standards aren't high enough for you, I mean, this this is all derived in context with that, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, to uh, to fully grasp uh the perfection of the lord um the um but uh, beyond it all as harsh as this may sound you have to realize god is merciful god went to such an extreme yeah. uh by sending jesus to the cross to to make make evident the extent of his mercy yeah. That uh, this is uh, this is, I believe, uh, the, the primary message of the Lord that uh, I mean, when you think about it, he didn't have to go to the cross. He he, he had the authority, uh, the um, wherewithal to simply remake everything or simply yes. forgive everything. Mm -hmm. And it would have been still would have been righteous because that's what uh, uh, the, the regal uh, capacity that he, that he had was. Uh, but no, he went to the cross specifically to pay the sin debt of us, our sin debt, to show the extent of his mercy. This is this is actually how he chose to make love. Yeah, love by exactly. dying. I mean, this is by dying on our behalf to pay that debt, so that the rigor of the law would be maintained. And at the same time, the extent of his love would be made known. Amen. And that's this is uh, 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 this is a message. So the point is here. Uh, this sounds condemning. This, uh, if you if you give it a, a, a kind of a um, an overview, the way the language uh, plays out. But um, behind it all is a God of mercy, who through Jesus Christ has provided uh, a way of salvation. Um, that is, um, you know, he's just trying to make it all the more desirable here uh, through making making um, making it known to you um, the need uh, for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, Lord, we that thank you that you loved us enough to lay it out, that you laid out your life and you laid out our foibles and you laid out our sin. And then you said, come to me and I will pay your debt. We thank you, Lord, for paying our debt. We thank you that we can walk joyously in your presence. We ask your blessing on churches across the world this day, that souls will be saved, that bodies will be healed, that families be restored, that your name be honored. We ask that we not be just consumers of your stuff, but contributors into what you would have us to do. Let us be obedient. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Ask you a blessing on service tonight at, at church that I would be uh, that I would be obedient presenting your word. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. Oh Lord, fill us again with your spirit. Oh Lord, fill us again and again with your spirit. In Christ's name, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for 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 your word, Lord God. I would encourage anybody that's listening or seeing this at home to come back tomorrow because this word is a continuum from yesterday today and tomorrow god loves us he gives us this word which is harsh sometimes but he loves us and he wants us to be in heaven lord god with our family and with him let us be doers of the word lord god help us help us to 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 work out our salvation lord god as you've called us to do, empower us, 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let us be doers of what you'd have us to do. Get Empower us, Lord God. I thank you for the commitment that you've made to us and help us to work out and work out our salvation. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for the instruction you provided through your word, your spirit, that uh, we may come to ever better understand our need for you and seek you and uh, with an open heart to uh, turn and obey <laughs> and uh, live as, as you would have, as you would have us live in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings.